Ephesians chapter 6, 10. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand, stand. Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness. Let me repeat that because sometimes we pass by the loin part. Having your loins girt about with truth. Now, let me comment on each one as I go. When you have your loins girt about with truth, there is a level of truthfulness, honesty, real transparency that you must live with. And the reason for that is because turning a blind eye to things you need to deal with, turning a blind eye to issues that hamper you, hinder you, and trip you up is not a good thing to do. Honesty brings a much easier level of healing, deliverance, and freedom. When you hide, when you cover things that you really need to be exposing, you give the devil the right to blackmail you. You give the devil the right to hinder you, to bind you up, to lock you down. And a life of bondage is not the abundant life. The abundant life is a life of freedom. You cannot be free when you cannot be truthful with yourself and God and others. All right. Now, stand therefore having your loins girt about with truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness. That's a lifestyle of holiness, you guys. That means you can't walk around cussing when you get good and ready, when it's just convenient. You can't be spiteful when somebody backstabs you. You can't retaliate tit for tat. You can't play those games if you really want to be a child of God. Verse 15, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. They want to argue, you be a peacemaker. A soft answer turns away wrath. A person can't argue flying solo. They have to have a participant. If you don't participate, there is no argument. Now, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, take in the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. So you've got your faith working on you. Your faith is working for you. That's your shield. So no matter what people throw at you, no matter what uh, attacks the devil has let lying in wait to catch you on your blind side, your faith protects you because you have more faith in God, more faith in the word, more faith in your walk of holiness than you do in the devil because you know the word says greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. So your faith is your shield. It protects you. And take the helmet of salvation. Now the helmet of salvation, you see my hat? Somebody throw a ball and hits the hat. It's going to may put a dent in the hat, but it's not going to hurt me because I've got this helmet of salvation. Your helmet of salvation means no matter what games the devil tries to play in your mind, no matter what lies he tries to plant in your thought life, in your belief practices, whatever, the bottom line is your mind has been renewed according to Romans chapter 12. When your mind is renewed, let me quote it for you so that you get it. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, 
which is your reasonable service and be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by what? The renewing of your mind. What is one of the ways you renew your mind? Not only in prayer, but by reading that word, it renews your mind. It washes your, your thoughts from stinking thinking. If you're thinking stinking, so is your attitude and your behavior as it will follow suit with your stinking thinking. So you must constantly renew your mind by the washing of the word of God. You renew your mind. You cleanse those dirty thoughts. You cast down every thought, every high thing and every thought that would, that would exalt itself against the knowledge of Christ. Anything that is diametrically opposed to God, you cast out. So you renew your mind. So when somebody comes at you the wrong way, you won't come back at them the wrong way. You will process it through your renewed mind, not your sinful fleshly mind that says, okay, tell them all. You know how you can get them told. No, that's not God's way. And you know it. Now, listen. Also, when, you, when your mind is renewed, you're not so paranoid. People can't do things and say things that keep you suspicious they keep you walking on eggshells yeah what did they mean by that mm -hmm. no 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 you don't care what they meant by it because it's neither here nor there why your mind is renewed when your mind is renewed you're not concentrating on base things of life you're not concentrating on the lower ways of human beings on on their pettiness on their silliness on their ugliness no you're concentrating on higher things. So you don't have time to waste your energy dealing with that stuff. All right. And I'm going to read something from another chapter to back that up in a second. But right now we're going to finish with the... <clears throat> okay. Verse 17. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. That is what you need. The word of God renews you from head to toe, inside and out. It will do a healing. It will do deliverance. The word of God will guide you. The word of God will protect you. The word of God will warn you. The word of God will enlighten you, will strengthen you. The word of God does a lot of things, but you never know until you get in it. Now, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. Now, I want you to go with me real quick. I said I was going to back that word up, up, okay? I want you to go with me about dealing with the base things of life, not wasting your time. This is why you can't waste your time with nonsense. Second Timothy, I want to make sure I have it right. Yes, Second Timothy Chapter 2, five, 3 to 5. Okay. Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. And if a man also strive for masteries, yet is he not crown except he strive lawfully whatever you do let it all be according to the bible let it all be according to scripture not according to your flesh lean not to your own understanding but in all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your path so when you're walking this walk and you're moving and you're navigating through all the things God has for you. You must be protected. You must be covered. On top of being covered, as Lynn says, covered in the blood of Jesus. You must be protected, but then you must keep your mind renewed 
so that whatever you see, everything is filtered. You can filter what you see and what you experience in life. You can filter that. This is a good soldier now. Filter it through the word of God, through the ways of God, through his, his law, through <clears throat> his percepts, the scriptures. You can filter it through the ways of Jesus Christ, or you can filter it through your flesh. And I guarantee you, if you filter life through your flesh, your life is going to be pure hell. Take my word on that one. Take my word for it. It will be pure hell. So if you want to be someone that God can use, if you want to be someone that God can commune with, that God can share the secrets, the, the, the secrets, the mysteries that he has hidden in his word, that he has hidden in his in, in the revelations that come with experiencing him. <clears throat> You will have to keep your mind above the nonsense. You'll have to focus on things above, not on things below. You have to remember who you belong to. You have to remember who he is and the authority he gave you. So no matter what you deal with in the vicissitudes of life, you have to know that you have authority over everything. You have authority over animals. You have authority over demons. You have authority over situations. You have authority over sickness. You have authority over bodily functions. You have authority over your own self-control. Now, the Lord gave me an example a little early as I was getting ready for this. Let's say you're, <clears throat> you're in, on a team and you're working for uh, some big project. And in this team, it's kind of a military thing. And the way that the, uh, the order of uh, authority goes you know that whatever they tell you, <clears throat> you're on a need to know basis. Some things you don't need to know. Some things are classified. And at your level, if they tell you to do A, B, and C, you are to do A, B, and C, whether you want to or not. That is a level of discipline. If the, the person above you tells you to do it with a foul attitude. You are to do it with a professional attitude. You don't come back at your superior, but blah, 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 blah. Who do you think you are? Don't you talk to me, blah, 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 bloop, blah, bloop. You can kiss my royal, you know what? No, sweetheart, no. No, it doesn't go like that. If you can keep your mouth shut and take it from a superior and take it to God later and get it off your chest, rush it off, pray it off, whatever. But you learn to keep your lips sealed. Then on a daily, day-to-day -day basis, when you're dealing with the everyday Joe Blow, in your family, on the street, your job, whatever, and some of you even at your church, some neighbors are hard to deal with. But if you can use self-control on that team, that specialized team, where you have no right to speak up, you must obey orders. And you have learned that discipline well. Just like a private obeying the order of a general. Even if they don't like what they're told to do, even if they don't like the attitude in which it was told. They can't get caught up in their emotions. A man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life. No, no man that warreth does that. He, he can't afford to. You can't get caught up in me, 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 me. You can't get caught up in nonsense, pettiness foolishness. 
You can't get caught up in any of it. So what you do is you discipline yourself. And the way you discipline yourself is you draw from the power of his might. The Holy Spirit gives you the power to use self-control. The Holy Spirit gives you the power and the discipline, the ability to shut your trap when you want to fly it open and cuss them out. When you want to tell them off, when you want to tell them where to go, to go play on the freeway, go jump in the lake. You want to tell them where to go, but you know that that would not please God because that is not self-control, which is one of the fruits of the Holy Spirit. And when you go down the next line and it says, verse six, the husbandman that laboreth must be first partaker of the fruits, which means you must bear fruits of righteousness. You cannot claim Jesus, claim to fame of being a born again Christian and you act like a plum D fool. That's diametrically opposed to the fruits of the Holy Spirit. You can't come home and beat your wife. That's diametrically opposed to the Holy Spirit. You cannot disrespect one another in public. That's diametrically opposed to the ways of the Holy Spirit. When the Holy Spirit empowers you, it doesn't empower you to dominate. The Holy Spirit empowers you to use self-control. Submit yourselves one to another and pray one for another that ye might be Heal the effectual fervent prayer of the righteous availeth much. Not the effectual fervent cussing out. No, that ain't going to avail nothing but some more mess. So when you want to be in the master's hand, you want to be for his use. You want to serve him. You want to be used by him. You want to follow him. You want to know him. You must know him. Not only in his glory, not only in the power of his resurrection, but you must know him in the fellowship of his suffering which means there will be time people will do you wrong and you are still to, lit, to zip the lip. There'll be times when you'll be falsely accused. There'll be times when people will do things that you don't deserve and they think you do because in their mind you're wrong, but you and God know you're right. You're, you're innocent, but they treat you like a criminal. And you don't even know why half the time. You are not to fight your own battles. The battle is the Lord's. See, all of these go with being a soldier for God. All of these, you give up a lot of rights. You give up a lot of rights. You have the right to be rich. You have the right to be happy. You have the right to have your dignity. You have the right to protect your your, your respectable name. You have a right to defend yourself. You have a right. You have a right to do a lot of things. But when you're in Christ, there will be times just like the private that just came out of boot camp, finds out he doesn't have many rights now. You find out that there are some things you must submit to that you should not have to. You have a right to say no, but you don't submit. For their sake, you submit for his sake. Because now you are a peacemaker. Feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. See, there's a time for war and there's a time for peace. You don't create your own war. You engage in God's war and you let God fight your battles. That's the way of a soldier. When the soldier's off to war, he's battling the war of the country, not his personal battles. They have to wait till he gets back home. But right now, he's engaged in warfare. 
And when you're engaged in spiritual warfare, you can't get caught up in fleshly nonsense, fleshly little battles. No, leave that to the fools that want to play in the dirt. No, you leave all that alone. You think on things above. You concentrate on your father's business, being about your father's business, the works of the kingdom, the ministry, blessing others, edifying others. Your life is not self-absorbed. You're not all about me, myself, and I. You're not to be a narcissistic, egotistic, conceited, self-centered, selfish, me, 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 uh, entity. No, you're about the things of God. And when you're about the things of God, you don't have time to waste your energy or your mind or your or anything on silly pettiness. You don't have time for that. Now, do you want to be grown? Do you want to be strong in the Lord and the power of his might? Do you want to live under his anointing, being a partaker of his fruits of righteousness, holiness, love, faith, truth, virtue? What, what do you want to be? Because if you just want to be me, I got to be me, then baby, you in the wrong ballpark. You need to take a walk and rethink your, your uh, priorities. Because God can't use you. I guess I'll end on that note. Think about where you want to be. Is it worth it to you? Jesus said, when you sit down, a person that gets ready to plan something, he first must sit down. Think about it. Count the cost. Count the cost. There is a cost to walking with Jesus. There is a cost. He says, he that puts his hand to the plow and looks back is not worthy of the kingdom. Lot's wife turned to stone for looking back at Sodom and Gomorrah. Okay, I've got to stop because this can go in a bunch of different directions. Just know that God will take you there. He'll get you there. He'll develop you. He'll prune you. He'll heal you. He'll cleanse you. He'll do everything you need. But you cannot live for him and live for them at the same time. He will not cohabit with sin and he will not cohabit with your flesh. So the choice is yours. The ballpark is in you. The ball is in your court. You decide what you're going to do. You sit, you count that cost, and you remember that you must be willing to take up your cross and follow him. You're not taking up a lollipop. It's a cross, which means it's not an easy road to hold. Remember that. But it's worth it. I'm telling you it's worth it. Because life without God is not easy either. Life without God can be pure D hell. And the sad part is you got to feel every blow because you don't have his protection buffering the pain, healing. You don't have any of that. So if I got to live a hard life, put me in God's hands, baby, because he'll do right by me. The world will not. Goodbye, world. I stand no longer with you. Goodbye, pleasures of sin. I stand no longer with you. I made up my mind to go God's way the rest of my life. I've made up my mind to go God's way the rest of my life. What about you? Mm -hmm.